everybody. Um, it's my pleasure, of course, to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Brett Toombs. Uh, Dr. Toombs is a professor in the Department of Psychiatry, McGill University, and a senior investigator at the Lady Davis Institute for Medical Research at the Jewish General Hospital in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, an important area of his research focuses on working together with people with scleroderma to develop strategies to live better with the disease. Dr. Toombs is the founder and director of the Scleroderma Patient-Centered Intervention Network, or SPIN, has, uh, as you can see in the logo behind him there. Uh, Dr. Toombs has also conducted research on mental health screening and assessment, and is the chair for, or sorry, chair of the Canadian Task Force on Preventative Healthcare, which develops evidence-based guidelines to support primary care providers across Canada in delivering preventative healthcare. Dr. Toombs is a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Sciences and a member of the Royal Society of Canada College of New Scholars, Artists, and Scientists, and just an all-around great friend of the uh, Scleroderma Society of Ontario and Scleroderma Canada. Um, and again, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to you. Great. Thanks, Lacey. <clears throat> it is, it's, um, it's, it's, um, can you see my slides there now, by the way? No, I can't. I just see your background. Hang on one second. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Now? now we can, good now? Okay. okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a real pleasure to be here, wherever here, however we want to define what here is these days, right? <clears throat> it, it's, um, uh, on one hand, it's great to be among friends because I know I'm, I'm among friends. On the other hand, I can't see any of, any of you, so this is a very strange way to be among friends, but I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, so I'll talk, uh, as Lacey said, about our SPIN. Um, and many of you are familiar with it. I'm really happy today to be able to share with you some of the programs we have that are active and out there. And you know, before I start, this says in the first slide that SPIN is an international collaboration of patients, researchers, clinicians, uh, that work together, and I can't I can't emphasize that more. I mean, there there are literally hundreds of people. <clears throat> I think in some way have been involved in spin, including many many of you out there, many people living with scleroderma in many different ways. So, um, this this really what I'll be speaking about today is a not the culmination, but a, a progress report on where we are, and some ex really exciting things that you can that are out there for you uh, as we speak, and that are coming very soon. Um, <clears throat> and this is not a surprise what I'll say now in that, in that, you know, people with rare diseases, including scleroderma, face very unique challenges. And uh, from getting a diagnosis, many people we, we come across in our programs have never met somebody else with scleroderma. They, it's hard to find a healthcare provider to, who knows the disease and um, uh, what to do. There the, the are only limited treatments. And many of the things that are available in common diseases that people expect to have as part of their healthcare just simply aren't there. Um, <clears throat> and at SPIN, we don't work in you know, basic medical care, but we do work, uh, I'm a psychologist uh, by training, and but we, work, we do work in all the other aspects that can be helpful to living better with the disease, whether it be providing uh, information, education, something called self-management, which is a, uh, sometimes a terrible name, but it means basically not self-managing, but having the confidence and the information to work effectively with your healthcare providers to um, manage your condition as best as possible and to <clears throat> do the kind of things that keep you as healthy and happy as you can be. Uh, the psychological support and rehabilitation. So all these things, if you have cardiovascular disease or rheumatoid arthritis, <clears throat> there are people out there that do these things and they're programs that are well-developed. You just sign up for them and you can go. Um, the problem is, is that in a disease like scleroderma, these things just haven't been out there. And <clears throat> we started on SPIN back now, oh gosh, about 10 years ago. The first thing we did, because we, we try not to reinvent the wheel and do work unnecessarily, we went out and we said, let's look at all the rare diseases out there, something like 7,000, and see where people have successfully designed programs and tested them and gotten them out there to people. And we honestly didn't find more than one or two examples. They just weren't out there. No one, no one had been doing this. And it, <clears throat> it is difficult. Uh, to design things specifically for a smaller group of people to test them and so forth and get them out there in a way that can be distributed because you know, unlike a big uh, cardiovascular uh, disease center or arthritis center, there aren't so many people in any one setting and our, our clinicians and our clinics 
don't have the same kind of resources to provide, to develop these things or provide them. So we, we came together about 10 years ago. We, again, being a group of people with scleroderma, uh, clinicians from around the world, uh, researchers, some uh, methodologists and specialists, and decided that this, this is a gap that we ought to fill. And we've been working since then, and our mission is to develop, test, and disseminate, or get out to you, you know, free of charge, accessible interventions in these areas or tools that can be helpful to people to live better with scleroderma. Now, not every tool is, not every person needs these tools, and some need different ones than other ones, but we want to have uh, things that people can use. What, what, how are we going to do this, given how it hadn't been done before? Uh, we decided that we had to work very closely with not just patient organizations, but people with the disease. That this had to be international, that no country, no province or country was going to be able to do this by itself. Um, we had to do something called a cohort. We couldn't start from scratch every time we wanted to do something. We had to get a group of people that, would, that we could learn from along the way and have as an ongoing uh, research framework. And we knew that we had to, um, we started out doing online. We knew we had to get things to people in a way that was cost effective. We, we couldn't count on every um, treatment center having a psychologist or a rehabilitation therapist at no scleroderma. And in fact, most people with scleroderma can't go regularly to a specialized treatment center, so that wouldn't work. So we've, we started out online. Recently, we've learned that video conference is much more accessible than it was when we started this 10 years ago. And, that, and you'll see where we've, we've uh, taken advantage of that. Um, we, again, I just another couple of points that all of the provinces uh, in Scleroderma Canada have been tremendously supportive of what we, what we do and we work closely with them. We, this, none of this could happen without them. And we also have uh, support from around the world. These are all the different groups that we've worked with in, in, some, in some way. And across the top two rows, you'll see the different Canadian groups. Um, and all, all the groups in Canada have not only supported this <clears throat> um, by their efforts, by participating, uh, by providing feedback and input and helping us to get the word out there, but they've also support, provided financial support, which is really, really crucial. And, and just again, see that SPIN has been, these are just, a, every time we put up pictures like this, um, I know we're leaving people out. This is out of literally dozens and dozens of people have been with rheumatologists and others who have been closely involved. These are just some of them, this is a sample you might, you might recognize. And thank, thanks to all of them. Um, you know, some of you might be involved in the SPIN cohort. And this is, this is a mechanism. So every few months we send out uh, questionnaires. And the questionnaires are about problems that are important to people with the disease. In fact, we had a survey a couple of years ago about what should, we should be studying. So what we do with this, we use this to do some back, background research, whether it be you know, barriers to being active, uh, we're, we're working on developing work in, in oral health right now, and we're not going to ever do, SPIN is not going to do a, a dentistry trial of anything, but if we can get a better idea of what are the major uh, impediments to, to having good oral health that people are facing and what the challenges they face, we can get that information through the cohort, for instance, and then get it to the right people who can do that research. So we can get it started, uh, even though we, we, it isn't what we do ourselves. So. So what we do is we go out and we have these questionnaires really do matter. So if you, those of you out there who are filling it out, um, and we do anything from we're looking at studies on work and have being employed. Um, uh, we're getting doing stuff on how you get information about nutrition and diet right now. We're building so that all that comes to the cohort, and I'll have some information at the end by the way about how to get in touch with us if you're not in the cohort right now, because uh, right now you have to sign up through a. Uh, Scleroderma Center, but if you're not in the cohort, we're going to be having a mechanism where you can sign up directly with us, and I'll, I'll give some contact information at the end, and that would be fantastic if any of you want to do that if you're not already part of it. Um, <clears throat> but in the end, what are we trying to do? We're trying to develop these tools, and I'll show you a few down the, down the way in the presentation that people can use. Anything from the number of them out here, I'll talk about the first four up there, so I won't get into those now, but you know, the self-management program, our hand program, uh, support group training, and so forth. And then we have a number of them that we're developing. Uh, one of them is a psychological intervention for dealing with walking into a room and looking different. That can be very difficult for some people. Um, general emotional coping, you know, exercise, our work with caregivers, and now our work with, uh, you know, diet and nutrition. 
And one thing that's really I want to point out here in this too is that how many how many of people with the disease are involved in all these things? These are just some numbers across the board. But if you start with a cohort, there have been almost a couple of thousand people have been involved and in, in really helping. We we gave a survey about what we should be researching, and we had 125 people fill that out. Uh, people are participating in our trials, and then I think what's important to, too to point out is that every one of these projects where we have we have a, a Spin has a patient advisory board. And that's chaired um, by Maureen Salve uh, here in, from Ontario and Karen Gottesman from uh, California. And there's about 10 people on that with scleroderma that provide oversight for our, what we do, um, review what we do, provide input. And then every one of these projects, we have a group of people, usually six to eight people with scleroderma who work along with the research team. So, um, and right now, what we did about a year ago, we put a call out and so, if you, what, that, what it means to work with a team is when we start a project, we usually do some, we would always do some research on what, what's important to people before we begin to develop any kind of tool or support mechanism. And um, we work with the patient advisory team to define what the problems are, how we should be looking at it, what the, what the different components are. You know, we just got done doing this with our oral health project. <clears throat> what are areas that might not be documented in the academic literature that people are experiencing? And we get all the information and then the team works with us throughout, provides comments, feedback, and then, you know, authors, whatever academic publications we do with us and so forth. So if you, <clears throat> there's another way to get involved if, you're, if you are interested, again, contact us, I'll have the information up there at the end um, to do. So <clears throat> I wanna take advantage and go through and uh, show you a few of the things that we have been working on and that now are actually out there, uh, so in some cases of you. So this, this first program is our spin hand program. And this is actually out there and available to, pub to the public. Um, you can, the link is here at the bottom. <clears throat> if you go, you know, tools.spinsclero.com, uh, you, you can use this. And this is a modular program of exercises uh, that you can work with to either to maintain function in your hands or uh, try not to lose it, you know. Uh, <clears throat> And if you go to our website and try this, and this is, to give a little background to this program, this was developed uh, by, by a lot of people on the team. I know Maureen Salve was on the team that developed this, and some others out there. It was led by Serge Pohado and Luc Mouton from Paris. And Yup Welling, uh, who is a, a person with scleroderma from the Netherlands, and actually was our 2018 Spin is Maureen Salve Spin Inspiration Award winner because of what he's done with this project. Yup went would take the train from the Netherlands uh, to Paris. He's an, uh, am quite a good amateur videographer and would film all the modules. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. And this went on developed over several years, but now you can see that we have, there's different modules you can go on and each of the modules has different exercises. One of them focuses on the thumb. Another area focuses on making a fist, uh, finger extension in the wrist. You know, so whatever you want to work on or whatever you think is most important for you, you can go in, <clears throat> click on it, take a look. At, at the beginning, uh, I don't know if Maggie's on right now. I, I thought I saw Maureen there. Um, Maggie Lache from Hamilton is a really, really great collaborator here with, with SPIN. So Ma Maggie provides information on hands and, and the exercise program. And Maureen also provides information and, and some of her experiences doing these. And as you'll see, so each of our programs, including the hand program, has this background information. There's a website tour um, and transcripts for all the material. And you'll see as you go there here, I'm not, I'm not going to try to show the videos. We often show the videos in our presentations, but I think with, with this many people on Zoom, I was a little bit afraid to try to launch a video. So, but if you go here, you can, you can see them all yourself. But if you go here to the program, what you'll see is that this is the Make a Fist module. And if you go to the make a fist module, there's three different kinds of exercises. You know, one is on uh, knuckle bending, the other finger by finger bending, and the other one grip strength. And when you what you do is we have we have some information, and you also able to pick if you know if your if your hand impact is mild and moderate or severe. And we have different videos and exercises set up for those two groups of people. Now it's not a perfect distinction if you're mild to moderate or severe, but you can use what we, the information we have to guide you. And, and, and essentially, you can try them too. I mean, if you try one that's mild and moderate and it's a little bit difficult for you, you would go to, go to the exercise for people with severe hand impact, which makes it a little 
a little bit more easy to do. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and each of the videos, uh, each of the exercises has a nice video that demonstrates how to do the exercise. Um, it has a transcript that goes with the video. And I don't have them here, but they also have you know tips to avoid common mistakes. It's some of the mistakes that people make and how they're doing the exercises that we, we've uh, noted. There's also in some cases alternative versions. If you can't do one part of it, what's an alternative that you could do instead? Um, <clears throat> and one, th one thing that we also, and all of our programs have is um, so far, now Spin Hand is just online. I'm gonna talk about video conference programs a little bit, little bit later where you do them with a group. Uh, Spin Hand is only there online, but you can also, you, we have some information on how to put together a program. There's lots of options there. You know, which of the exercises you wanna do, how many exercises you want to do at any given time, um, you know, how long you have per day to do them. And, and with that, you can realistically set a goal. And one thing that's important too is, is being able to share your goal. So it's all set up here. You can set your goal by, you know, to do this and then share it with somebody. You'd share it with a group of friends uh, or a group of people, other people with scleroderma who are doing this. I think what they found in the academic literature, what we all know from common sense, is that if, if you tell somebody you're setting a goal and trying to do it, it's a little bit easier to do it, uh, I don't know, at the end of the day when you're tired or when you're not so motivated to do it, even though you know it's important. So that, that's all set up to here. You uh, can put in uh, people to share your goals with, put in briefly what you're gonna do and send it off and, and get, the, get the support you need. And again, this, this we built in because when we, as when we started this, the, I think the right assumption was that we were never gonna be able to deliver these programs unless we could be super efficient, because again, these are, these are free of charge right now. They don't cost nothing. I, I showed you the, the group, well, all the provincial people, uh, the groups out there contribute to this, uh, but we had, to, we had to keep it very inexpensive. So the cost is only uh, you know, to, to manage it on our side in our shop, to update the videos and maintain the, the platform and so forth, but we, not without it charging for it or beyond that. So this is, this is set up so you can do these yourself and hopefully share them with people. Um, you know, the program here has, has information has on scleroderm in your hands. And I, I should mention too, um, as you know, I just think thoughts come to my mind as I'm talking, I think about all of our funders and scleroderm in Quebec is an important one too. So this is all in French and English, all of our programs are. So if you go online, you'll see that they're in you know, English or French and you just, once you enter our platform, you'll be, you'll click initially if you prefer to do things in French or English and it'll always show you uh, everything in that language and then you can you can pick the language that uh, you wish to use or change it later on if you want um and um yeah so there's some information on, on what kind of things might occur with your hands and what kind of exercise you might do and, and the questions you might have for your doctors about those those problems there's you know videos of, from some of your your colleagues here that have squared and they have talked about their experiences here part of the program so that, that's our, that was our first one and we, we've gone through and done all the testing with it and it's out there now. Um, and people can use it or can use it and show them to their, if they're going to a physical therapist that isn't, doesn't know square or even share those with them. Um, the, sec the second program I wanna talk about, um, oops, sorry about that. I'm getting lost in the, trying to see what people are asking and uh, going for. Um, this, the second program I want to talk about is, <laughs> it, I'm chuckling because it was really been a great program, but it almost killed us. So um, this, this one, this is the spin chat program or the COVID home isolation activities together program. And some of you out there who were on our patient advisory team that were helped us put this together, know that this came together at the beginning of COVID. And in about, gosh, you know, you know, usually trials and programs come together over a long, long period of time, okay, sometimes a couple of years or more. This all came together in a couple of weeks from beginning to end. I've, um, and we're still, we've actually finished it. And it was very successful. I'll tell you what it was. And, and I still haven't quite gotten up to write the report. But like I said, this, this is the, the team here and, and the people that were, the patients that were involved in helping us put this together were just outstanding because this, 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 came at the beginning of COVID, the beginning of April. If you remember the timing, you know, we started to hear about uh, cases of COVID in early March in, in Canada. And by the end of March, right around when the start is when we were really in the, in the thick of it for the first time. Um, so 
again, there weren't there weren't really any 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 programs that are developed and tested for people with. Uh, oops, hang on. Oh, okay. Um, that for people's clear. Sorry, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I was getting a phone call. And I was thinking maybe it's someone who's telling me they can't hear me or see my slides or something, but it wasn't. So I, I've hung up the phone and I'm ready to keep going. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, you know, so what we were trying to do, we did a couple of things. One, we set up like another cohort, another where we follow people. Some of you might be participating in that. And we set it up so we can evaluate the kind of experience people are having with COVID. And, and in fact, as an aside, we just published our first paper and uh, article on that. And what, what became quickly apparent is when we started this, we also well, we also wanted to set up a, a program that we could provide to people to cope better with all the challenges of being isolated, having a bad disease that puts you at risk, and so forth. And one of the first things that our, our, our patient advisor team uh, told us was that you need to be looking at anxiety, not depression, for instance. And they were dead right. That became our main our main target for our, our program, the Spin Chat program. And we just did we just finished our first study on, on looking at people's mental health uh, pre COVID and during COVID in scleroderma. It's one of the, one of the only studies that have looked at you know what's happening to people beforehand and later on. And our advisory team was was dead on that things like depression symptoms that didn't change very much, but people had a lot of anxiety. Um, I think have continued to uh, throughout throughout COVID. And, and um, so in any case, what we did is we, we set up a program and, you know, this is not something to treat, say, anxiety disorders, you know, obsessive compulsive disorders or panic disorders, things like that. This was to try to help the people to, to manage anxiety, people who were, are at risk. And if you're living with scleroderma, you're, well, all of us are at risk to some degree. You know, if you have a disease, if you're older, um, and um, among a number of factors, you're, you're at risk here. And so... What, um, what we want to do is provide kind of a, a way to let like, people connect to each other, to be supported by each other when they're isolated potentially, as they, as they were in lockdown, to provide some uh, tools to stay busy, to, to some basic psychological tools to manage anxiety, some meditation tools, some worry management tools, um, how to stay, move your, keep moving your body, staying active, and that kind of thing, how to manage all the information out there, you know, which information we can look at how there's been, if you looked at all the information in COVID right now, you it'd drive you crazy, right? So we set this up, it was four weeks long, and everyone who enrolled in this, we randomized to get the program, or to get the program later, for, you know, four weeks later, we did it from the wait list, because uh, we, we had funding to do a trial, because it's uh, beyond squared, and if people are interested in knowing if this kind of program can be effective. And it was, you know, 60 to my, 60, 90 minute long sessions led by a moderator. And all our moderators were people with scleroderma who've been through another program we did, our spin sled program, which I'll talk about in a minute, was trained support group leader. So those people moderated all of our groups. And each group included three segments. We had a wonderful uh, recreational therapist who did some activities for uh, the beginning of each session to, for people to get to know each other, to have a little bit of time to enjoy each other. Then there was an educational session. And the last part of the segment, uh, each module or each meeting was a a little bit of a support group time. Um, these are some of the people that were, have been involved in the program. Uh, you'll see that uh, everyone, we're in, all the pictures here were people from our SPIN team, scientists, people from the, um, uh, the patient advisory team. I you know, looking at the bottom, there's Karen and Loop are there and, and, and others who are here. I, I think Maureen ought to be here somewhere, but I'm not sure where, and, and Catherine's here and a number of other people here. In any case, I'm always forgetting somebody when I, when I go that way. But, and, you know, we enrolled 162 people. Um, I think it's actually 100 and, yeah, some 62 people from around the world did the program. And I think this, this was messy. We assigned people in groups from 10 time zones and all over the world and made, found groups where they could all meet, you know, three times a week and have this going on. And this all kicked off in a couple of weeks. And we're still doing results. In the end, we found that at, right at the end of four weeks, there was a little bit of positive change from the people who got the program compared to people who didn't. And then when we measured again about six weeks later, there was more change. So it seemed to be like people were staying in touch still using some of the tools that, that they learned in the program. So it did help people to, uh, to cope better through all this. So um, that, was, that was really a success. And we're still writing that, the results up. But that was a, and it, what was great about this too is that you know, all these groups that came together were led, were led by people with scleroderma who had been trained already. 
and you know they did it we didn't have time to train them for this again they 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 did they were came in with really great skills and really great support group leadership and really took it on the fly with minimal extra work and made this work this is really was a joint effort of people living with the disease and our team and some other other scientists and so forth uh, and we had great support by the way we were funded by the canadian institutes of health research and a number of other organizations who, who pitched in including uh, some of the patient organizations from across Canada and Australia, a lot of people really came in and helped us out to make sure we could get this done. Um, they've, been, they've become increasingly really good partners. Another thing we learned here, by the way, is that we, we started out saying we were going to do things online, is that we really could deliver things in groups of people at the same time, get them together and people can do video conferences. That technology wasn't so developed when we started this 10 years ago. Um, and that was really successful. And that's related to the next program we're going to talk about, uh, which is our SPIN, um, SPIN Self program. So we're, this one is a new program that nobody, I mean, unless you've been, some of you out there have been working on it with us, you've seen parts of it, but this one hasn't been tested yet. And when we first uh, started doing this, like I said, this was going to be all online a do-it-yourself kind of program. Now these programs are very commonly available if you have arthritis or diabetes, and you can go to an arthritis self-management program or a you know, diabetes self-management program. And they're always done in groups because a really important component is being able to get together with people that uh, support each other, uh, enjoy each other's company, share your goals and what you're working with and share your experiences. Now, we didn't think way back we'd ever be able to do that because we had no way to get so many people together and that would leave people out if they weren't near a big center. But now with our spin chat experience, we realized that, that we should be doing it that way. And not only should we, we, we knew from the beginning it would be ideal to do it that way, but we also realized that we, we can do it this way. So we were supposed to start this about now, uh, this past month. And we, we've put this off until hopefully January we're gonna start. And we're, re, we're rapidly reconfiguring this. So instead of a do-it-yourself program online, we're going to be forming groups again, just like we did in the spin chat during COVID. Now these groups are going to be once a week, so they won't be as intense as the spin chat program. That was three times a week. This, this will be once a week uh, for 13 weeks, I believe is the number we've settled on. We've, we, we had to add a little bit here and there to bring the group component together. Um, and then we'll, we'll, again, we'll test it and, and later next year, be, it'll be available online and, and so forth. Um, and this is essentially a toolkit. I mean, not, not everybody needs every every tool here, but you've got a, a little, there's my modules on coping with appearance changes, on digestion and nutrition, you know, coping with emotions, uh, itch, uh, managing your healthcare and, and working with healthcare providers more effectively, you know, fatigue, um, pain, skin care, sleep. And ideally with this program, as we go forward, you know, we can only do so much at once and we have to budget what we can do. We can add modules too. You know, I, I know people have been talking to us about adding things on um, managing respiratory uh, components of scleroderma and some other key components here that we can just uh, tack on and once we once we have the bandwidth and the funds to build those. Um, and Maureen again did the introduction here with Laura Hummers from Johns Hopkins, who's a physician here. Again, talking about the program. It's very similar to the hand program. Like I said, this one will be, eventually this will be available online, just like the hand program that you can do if you, uh, yourself if you want. We'll be delivering it through groups where everyone can, in the group can go through, access the material online, do the programs, come into the group and, and discuss, uh, share goals, um, and so support each other. Um, you know, it starts with a simple quiz um, where, you know, you can, for yourself, decide which of these which of these issues is, is more of a problem for you than other ones? And then this, this will make suggestions to you then on which modules uh, would be, might be most useful to you. You can do any modules you want or not do other ones if you don't want, but this will suggest the ones that, that might be most relevant and, and, sh and show those to you first. Uh, the, and these are just some screenshots. So the, the module content, we've tried to make it as um, engaging as possible. There's some of its text and reading. You'll see in the, in the healthcare, uh, module that you can see up there at the top that each of those is a video. So there's some animated videos here. Some of them are videos with people talking. Some of them are clever animated videos that go, that go, go through some of the issues that uh, in learning and some of the techniques you can use um, and, and so forth. So in this one, again, 
there's so many people have put so much work in this. The, the team from Johns Hopkins developed some of the modules. Uh, Tracy Fresh from uh, Utah uh, provided other modules. You know, others from other places did other, did other work. Um, so again, this has really been a, sorry about that. It's really been a community effort. It's come together beautifully. And this is all gonna be, again, starting testing in the, in the first of the new year, again, in, in English and French. Again, there's, there's some uh, a goals program um, that you can set and track your goals. And in this case, since we're going to the group form, at least for, for our trial, it'll be, it'll be there to, to share with your group members. And there's worksheets that you can use, whether it be activity pacing, which means you know setting up goals and, and not, not doing too much, not doing too little, but not doing too much. Kind of challenging negative thoughts that can overwhelm us, but all sorts of all sorts of nice uh, worksheets and, and schemata that you can use. And as always, you know we, we've got some people with uh, with Square Demo sharing their experiences um, with the different topics involved and, and some of the strategies they've used successfully. Okay, and finally, the last of the program I'm going to talk about is the uh, is the spin slide program. And oops. so, oops, sorry, I'm trying to balance between the questions and seeing make sure no one has a question for me as I go forward, and then I lose my screen each time. So here we go. This 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 has been in the making for years. Um, this is you know, support groups are one of the key components of of our square demo community, and um, They've been part of our community for a good number of years, and people are, you know, have dedicated leaders that work super hard to support other people with the disease. But it's a, it's a really tough model when you think about the model of how 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 you care for each other in these groups. Um, you have people, and many times people who are very sick with a bad disease, who typically not always, but typically haven't had any, had training in uh, group dynamics or this kind of thing, trying to trying to provide a setting that provides good care for other people with a really bad disease who have their hands full with not just the disease, but everything that has to, has to go on in life around it. Um, so many of these groups work exceptionally well. Other, other groups you know, don't work as well as they could, or some of them don't, don't last very long um, because they're, <clears throat> they're tough to run. The other thing that we found has been a, a real challenge and we really wanna do better at this is having virtual support groups. And I think we've all seen during COVID right now that this is a real option. It's not that hard. People from all walks of life, and you're all here on a video conference today, can run these groups. We ran our spin chat groups, and these were these were led by people from of all ages of you know people with scleroderma that had been through our program. This is the program I was talking about where they were trained, and and came together and led these groups with people from ten countries around the world, all logging on the video. So this is really an option for us, um, and and the spin sled program. Again, we did the homework, with, we interviewed people, we interviewed leaders and people uh, who attend the groups, people who don't attend the groups, and so forth, did surveys with people. And the spin sled program was a result of this. Um, and what it does, it basically is a, a training education program for, for your support group leaders. So they can have more confidence in, in leading the groups in a way that uh, works well for everybody. But all, apart from working well for everybody, isn't as burdensome on them. It's been a real challenge for people to lead these groups. So we want people to be able to do this uh, without killing themselves doing it. Um, and there's ways that you can you can do that and be both really effective in providing a really nice uh, support setting with, without taking its toll on the leaders as much. So, and also another key goal is we want to train new leaders to start groups where there aren't any and to start online groups. And this one, I, I know this is already the second time I've said this, and I'll probably say it again. I, it's really a great opportunity now if you are interested in doing a support group, our basic requirement for training, the training is almost done. It's been a very successful training program. The trial, when we test it, is just about finished. We're just almost wrapping it up, but there'll still be opportunities in the last wave. And also beyond that, we'll keep the training program going. But our basic requirement is that a verified certified patient organization supports you and says, yes, this is, this is someone that uh, we can, we can uh, support to do a support group um, going forward, if once once that's in place, we'd be, we'd love to, try, to provide you with a program, and there is a great need for more of these groups online, um, just because so many people live so far away from. And COVID right now is obvious, but so beyond COVID, 
so many people live far away and, and need to have access to these. We want to have more of this available. So in any case, the program is 13 modules, so once a week for 60 to 90 minutes. Sessions are done over a uh, video conference. It, again, this, I've, I've shown from time to time, this is, uh, was our advisory team that helped us to put the program together. Uh, it helped film videos. We, since we, we film videos of different scenarios that can happen in groups and how leaders might, might best address them and support their groups, even when they're difficult. Um, and I saw a note from Violet a little bit, a bit ago. Violet, is, Violet went through the program. Trace, Laura Diaz is our uh, the president of the Michigan tra chapter has great experience as a social worker in the Squidward community. So we were, we were just very fortunate to run into Laurie, who's been doing the training. And then Violet went through the program and has taken on the French language uh, training, done just an outstanding job uh, with that. So thanks, Violet, for that. So again, we offer the program in, in, you know, in both English and French. And I won't go through all these, you know, I'm happy to provide all the slides and information if anybody's interested, just contact us at the information at the end. I can send you these, I can send you this information. But, you know, talk about what the leader's role is, how to start a group, structuring meetings, um, you know, support group culture, the group dynamics, and how to, how to do the best you can and make sure that everybody feels in, included and has a chance to, to have their needs met in the groups. Uh, grief and loss is a, is, a, is a big element. There's always lots of loss, in, both for the leaders leading the groups, um, as well as for people in the groups. And we get into things like advertising, recruiting, uh, continuity, and, and remote groups, and supporting yourself as a leader, for instance. So, um, and the way, the way you, again, similar to, somewhat similar to other programs, so there's a, there's a manual, there's a program manual that everyone you'll see up there at uh, the top right, uh, some snaps from that. So all the people in the program have a program manual. There's uh, slides that go with it. Now each of the sessions has a little bit of, we don't, we don't spend a lot of time in teaching from the slides, but there's a little bit of an overview of some of the key points. <clears throat> we have videos, you'll, you'll see uh, Laura's there with uh, Ken, uh, Rose, um, Karen and Catherine there. They were, among the people who came to Montreal and, and shot these videos a couple of years ago. Um, and we have an online resource center. So there's, in our online resource center, there's videos and other resources that, that if you have a group, you can use them as educational material. That's one of the big challenges for people in, in, to do these. And there's also an online chat room for, for participants. So once you've gone through the program, there's a community there that's closed just to the graduates of the program. And you can, uh, you know, not to, not to solve each other's problems per se, but to share your experiences, to share what you learned, what you've tried in different situations, what happened, so that you each can benefit from, from each other and, um, and, and use, a, use, use that support. And at the end of the program, uh, when you finish, you know, you get a, a certificate uh, that, that, you, that you finish the program. Uh, and these, these, depending on which, which organization you're coming from, provincial, or we also are you know, working with different countries around the world, we'll have your, your, you know, your organization logo here. Okay. So the, the very last thing I want to talk about briefly, and then I think we'll have some time for, well, we definitely have some time for questions, is what we're calling spin share. And this basically means that we go through all, the, all of this, we spend, lots of time and resources and have contributions from the community building these things. We want to make sure we get it to people. And this is kind of, a, for our nomenclature, we're calling it our, our spin share endeavor. We want to make sure we share this and get these to people and that nobody has to pay for it. Right? I mean, of course, like I said, the organizations contribute so we can do this, but everyone out there can access it regardless of their financial uh, resources available. Um, you know, and you'll see that right now when you go to the website, this, the tools that spinsclero.com, Right now, the hand function program is there. Uh, the self eventually, the self management program. Once we're finished testing, will go out there. And some of the other programs, th these other programs, we have finished. We just have to go through the process of, of getting them funded, doing the testing, and then um, putting them out there. But eventually, you'll have a whole menu of things, depending on what's most important to you. Uh, and you know, each of the, like I said, each of these programs has different modules within it but the different programs focus on different aspects. So the self-management program is kind of a broad, it has lots of different topics at a little light level. And some of those same topics, like appearance changes, is in the self-management program light, but if you're, it's more of a concern for you, we have a program dedicated to that. It was built, again, by many, many people. That was led, for instance, by the 
uh, team at the University of uh, California, San Diego, along with um, people from the Center for Appearance Research in Bristol in the UK. It's simple to register. Um, at this point, you know, we do have a big research program. That's how we fund building these things is we get research money and we, we build these things and then we research them. But at the end, if you're coming to the SPIN share platform, this isn't research anymore. It's just a, it's a platform that you can use these tools. So, but you, you just ask that you register, um, set up a password, it's pretty easy. You have a SPIN account and you're off and running and you can use any of the programs you want. And, and as a wrap up, I mean, again, I, I showed something similar to this before, but it's, it's super important that we uh, thank all of our funders. And I want to thank all of you, you know, every, every dollar when you go on a walk and you provide uh, funds to your, you know, provincial and national organizations here in Canada, they help and support some of this work too. And, and that's, that's critical, particularly the work we do after research. So one of the tricks we have is that we're, we've gotten pretty good at getting research money to, to do some of the work and test it, but it's, uh, the, the research organizations don't pay you to keep getting it to people later. And that's, been, that's really been one area, for instance, where the different provincial organizations have jumped in and supported us. And so thanks, thanks to them, and thanks to all of you who support your, your, your own organization so they can, they can do that. Um, we're on social media, on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter, no, I, 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 no I, I thought it was Twitter until about a year ago when my team thought it was quite funny, but said it's Twitter. I don't know how to use it, but someone on our team is out there using it. I, I do look at it. And I, but, and all of our information is there. They do a great job. Angelica Brazil is uh, leading that right now. And there's our website. There are emails there on our website also. You can email our team. You can get, you look, look my email up. I should have put it here or just email our team. And I'd be happy to uh, communicate if you have any questions or comments or want to get involved in SPIN. Um, we'd be thrilled to have you. Um, and, and, and on that, that note, I think it's, it's time for it's time for some questions. Brad, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, you have access, you can see the question and answer window. So I'll let you field your questions there as they come up, as they come up. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark, Violet, and Edith for the, um, for the nice comments. It's really, it's really rewarding to hear those. Thank you. Do, are there questions that people have or anything else I could, I could address? If we don't have any questions at the moment, uh, we won't take any more of your time. I appreciate, um, I appreciate you. We all do. <laughs> so thank you. Um, yeah, I think, Maybe we'll just, I'm going to come back in here and start my video. So what, I do have a question there, there Lacey. Yeah, so thank you. You could register for the SPIN cohort directly in your contact info. Um, Lacey, can people see the slides? Can they get the slides we provided? Because the last page, Lori, is it's at spin, spinsclero.com. If you go there, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's contact information. Yeah, I can absolutely make that available. I think I guess I could I could also respond here, right? Just type in. Um, I'm not... No, I'm happy to share. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but that that's how. If you go to spinsquare.com, you can you, you you can find information for contact our team there, and then the person who who feels those will get that to the right person. Sorry, Brett. Were you waiting to answer a question? Still, I'm sorry. No, no. I'm I'm just I'm just waiting, Lacey, until you you tell tell us what maybe what the next step is. Are we are we all set? <laughs> the next step is you can you can enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, and we'd like to thank you, like I said, for being with us again. Uh, I'm gonna turn my video back on here and say uh, goodbye to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you thank know, you. John and I here in the office also had the. Um, opportunity to be a part of the uh, support group leader training and the spin chat sessions um, through COVID and it was such a great opportunity and it connected us with patients all over the world, which was pretty incredible. So, um, you know, we, we from um, an office perspective from, uh, from our set of things are really thankful for all the work that you guys do. So thank you.
Good. Thanks, last, thanks, everybody. Do you want to just address that one question there? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I'm based, in, I'm, so I'm personally at McGill University in Montreal to answer where the question is. Um, and we started in Canada, we started from the beginning internationally. So we have, I don't know, I don't know what kind of organization we are. I think we're, we have people from all around the world that make big contributions. Um, and if you want to be involved, you can live anywhere you want. I mean, right now, it's important that you can communicate in English or French. And for some of our things, we have in Spanish too, but that's a little more limited. That's really the, the if you have scholar derma and you can communicate in English, French, or Spanish, you're, it's, it's, it will work for you. Great. Thanks, Lacey. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again. Uh, Brett, you're back with us on Wednesday to share some spin highlights. Uh, and we also have uh, a surprising or a surprise announcement coming up that you'll be sharing with us on Wednesday. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Yep, that's great. All right, bye. <laughs>